invention of sick brains. One could imagine nothing more senseless nor any more indecent way of turning the idea of the Godhead into a, mock your, uh, into a mockery. When all is said, we have no reason to wish that the Italians and Spaniards should free themselves of the drug of Christianity. Let's be the only people who are immunized against the disease. Christianity is a disease, according to Hitler. And Muslims have the nerve to say that Hitler was a Christian. Think about this. When I say Osama bin Laden is a Muslim, what do I mean? I mean, does Osama bin Laden believe in Allah? Yes. Does he believe that Muhammad was a prophet? Yes. Does he believe the Quran is the word of God? Yes. Does he believe in the five pillars? Yes. Does he believe in the six articles of faith? Yes. Does Osama bin Laden believe all the things that Muslims are supposed to believe? Yes. We turn to Hitler. Why could anyone, why would anyone say that Hitler was a Christian? Did he believe in the Bible? No. Did he believe in Jesus? No. Did he believe in Jesus' resurrection from the dead? Not at all. Did he believe in the deity of Christ? No. Did he believe in the Trinity? No. Did he believe in any of the doctrines that Christianity teaches? No. And Muslims say, ah, but he's a Christian. <laughs> Isn't this absolutely silly and absurd? So that's one, that's one of the problems. In this program, we're going to cover two main problems with the, the standard Muslim response when we often uh, point out atrocities committed in the name of Islam is to point, ah, oh, what about Hitler and the Holocaust? Well, we've pointed out one, Hitler was about a million miles away from being a Christian. He couldn't be more anti-Christian if he tried. Second, what did Islam have to do with the Holocaust? Were Muslims standing against it or were they encouraging it? Mm. Were they even taking part of it? Yeah. Uh, we're going to look at question. that in this program and you're going, to, you're going to see, my friends, when you think about the Holocaust and you think, ah, Christian Europe, uh, think again, think again, and start thinking uh, towards the teachings of Muhammad. Brother David, this is just amazing. You know, one, as you know, uh, a debater who debates Muslims, uh, well, all around the world, uh, and of course we know that there's Muslims who call in wanting to debate the likes of David Wood and Sam Shimon. Keep calling in, keep emailing, and one day perhaps you'll get your chance. Uh, although I don't advise it, you'll lose. But anyways, Brother David, uh, you know, one of the things, and, and you tell me if I'm not right here, since you debate often, Muslims love to turn the argument around. Yes. They, they, they know they've got a lot of skeletons in mm -hmm. their closets. They don't want to deal with this, this, and this. So what do they always do? They always point out, oh, look at Hitler. He was a Christian. Look what he did to the Jews. But do we find uh, any true Christian uh, uh, forces uh, going and helping Hitler uh, kill the Jews aside from the German people who, of course, were, were inoculated into this Nazism? Do we see any Christian Americans running to, uh, to Germany to help exterminate the Jews <laughs> or Christian English people no. or whoever? I mean, no. No, no, we, 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 I mean, think about this. You, you certainly, without question, had people who would say that they were Christians yes. taking part in the Holocaust. Yes. And over the centuries, you've had people claiming to be Christians right. who, uh, who, who kill or kill Jews or kill in the name of Christianity. Now, here's the thing, and Muslims understand this. When you do this to Islam, Muslims understand it. If, you're, if someone is going to claim something and claim to be acting in the name of a religion, Muslims understand that that person has to be following the teachings of that religion in order to qualify. Otherwise, the person is actually in rebellion against the teachings right. of that religion. So, when a Christian says, hey, I'm killing in the name of Jesus, the question is, is that what Jesus taught? And you, if you read Jesus' teachings, of course he didn't teach that. What did love Jesus teach? Enemies. Yes, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute Amen. you. Put down your swords. These are the teachings of Jesus. Mm. So if anyone claims to be killing in the name of Jesus, he is directly disobeying the teachings of Jesus. In the book of John, uh, chapter 18, verse 36, Jesus specifically said that his followers do not fight to make Christianity uh, dominant in the world because the, the kingdom of God is not a kingdom of this world. It's not an earthly kingdom. Jesus Amen. specifically condemned fighting in his name, fighting with Absolutely. swords and so on. And we find the same thing uh, from the Apostle Paul who said that we don't, wa we don't war according to the flesh. Right. We, don't, we don't wage war the way the rest of the world wages war. So anyone, and, but anyone who claims to be killing in the name of Jesus is actually in rebellion against the teachings of Jesus. Now, when Muslims kill in the name of Islam, we have to ask the exact same question. We can't simply say, we can't be inconsistent here and say, 
well, Muslims are killing, therefore Islam is violent. No, Islam is violent or it's peaceful based on the teachings of Muhammad. Amen. And if we look at the teachings of Muhammad and we find out that they're actually peaceful and that Muhammad called for peace and unity among all people, well then people like Osama bin Laden would be in rebellion against Islam. Exactly. So let's be clear here. We're not saying Osama bin Laden is violent or the Grand Mufti took part in the Holocaust, therefore Islam is violent. No. Islam is violent because of what Islam teaches. And you see, uh, you see people living, living this out and carrying out Muhammad's commands in the modern world, in the 20th century and the 21st century, with people like Osama bin Laden and the Grand Mufti of, uh, of Jerusalem who uh, spurred on, who helped spur on uh, the Holocaust. Absolutely. The key, as David pointed out, is not just in the fruits of the religion, but the roots of the religion. You may see occasionally throughout history some small and short-lived instances where people who claim to be Christians committed violence and even may have done it with a cross on their shield or whatever else but you can't and no one has ever on News and Views or Jesus as, or, or Muhammad as long as we've had our shows produced even one ayah even one verse from our New Testament that tells a Christian to spread his faith by the sword as a matter of fact we've even opened it up to the Old Testament because Muslims love to say well what about the Old Testament you cannot show us one verse in the Old Testament that tells Jews or Christians to spread their faith by the sword because there isn't one. And uh, here's something else, Brother David, I want to remind our viewers. Hitler, the, the, what you, you quoted from his secret writings. Now, some might say that, that you know, uh, Hitler had a connection with the Pope during World War II. The Pope kind of gave his, uh, his blessing. We have to let our viewers recognize in, in the 1940s in Germany, Hitler didn't come out and, and openly and publicly desecrate a cross or anything. Because you have to remember that at that time, Germany was, was, it's true, they were a professing Christian nation. And so there, I think if you study the life of Hitler, you study some of his memoirs, these were secret confessions. He, he, had, he had secret disdain, contempt, and hatred for the establishment of Christianity. He killed Dietrich Bonhoeffer and other Christian uh, preachers or priests who refused to support the Nazis. But he was very careful not to alienate all of the people in Germany who were Christians so he could bring them under his spell. If he just openly attacked Christianity and said it's, it's terrible, it's horrible, it's false, he would have had a hard time winning all of the minds of Germany. And so that is an issue that we have to remember when we look at what Hitler actually did and said. And, and, and actually, you, we, we, we always point out that, uh, that six million Jews died in the Holocaust, actually millions of Christians died in those concentration camps as well. Amen. Thank you, Brother David. Well, you know what? We have that first video is ready. Let's show that first video that we we're trying to show before. The first video to set off the, uh, the theme tonight of Islam and anti-Semitism. And we're going to be looking at a video dealing with Islam's role. Islam, not just Muslims, but Islam's role in the Holocaust and in the killing and murdering of millions of Jews in World War II. Let's look at that clip right now. Intense believer in the Nazi ideology. And I know what uh, a supreme dedication to an ideology can do. From an early age, Alphonse Heck was influenced by the Nazi worldview. He joined the Hitler Youth at the age of 10, and by the end of World War II, he was a high-ranking officer of the Hitler Youth. It is absolutely correct to say, if you can't learn from the events of Nazi Germany, you will not be able to, to grasp the true intent of the danger of the radical Muslim world today. You're simply hiding. History has an unfortunate habit of always repeating itself.
right now, thank you for that clip. Uh, before we go to our second clip, which is really a continuation of that, it's an excellent video. Brother David, uh, maybe the Muslims can 